In this video, we're going to work a problem a lot like question six on the chapter 8-1 problem set. So here's our question. So the question says, what is the concentration of bromide, Br minus, in a 0 0.010 molar silver nitrate solution that is saturated with solid silver bromide? And we're given some more information that for uh, solid silver bromide, the Ksp equilibrium constant is 5.0 times 10 to the negative 13. Okay, so we're going to work this problem. This is what I call a common ion effect problem, and it's sort of looking at uh, solubility. So we have the Ksp equilibrium constant here. And what's different about this problem is that we're going to work this problem using um, activities and activity coefficients, which may give us a different answer than if we ignored those effects, the ionic strength effects. So uh, let's draw a quick picture of what's going on here in the beaker, just to kind of get an idea of how to work this problem and remind ourselves about common ion effect problems. Okay, so here in our beaker, we've got a solution of 0 0.010 molar um, silver nitrate. So we've got silver nitrate dissolved in water, and that's what's in the top side of this beaker. And then at the bottom of the beaker, we've got a solution that is saturated with solid silver bromide. So saturated solutions mean that we have excess undissolved solid. So maybe some of this solid has dissolved. So what kind of things do we have floating around in the beaker? Well, because silver nitrate, all nitrates are soluble, the silver nitrate is going to dissolve and dissociate in the beaker. So we're going to have silver cations and nitrate anions floating around in this beaker, right? So it's strong electrolytes, so it breaks up. So it is also possible that a little bit of our solid silver bromide dissolves to give us some silver and bromide here in solution. And of course, those silvers and bromides will hook back up together to reprecipitate. And so we've got an equilibrium going on here. And so we can represent that equilibrium with a reaction, right? So this is just the dissolution reaction showing how silver bromide is in equilibrium with its aqueous ions. And notice I've been careful with the stoichiometry here that one mole of silver bromide gives me one mole of silver and one more mole of bromide. So we learned before that we can write down the equilibrium constant expression for this reaction, Ksp, and that it's going to be the concentration of silver raised to the first power because of the stoichiometry times the concentration of bromide raised to the first power, again, because of the stoichiometry. Now, in this case, we know the uh, Ksp value, and we also know something about, because we know the molarity of the silver nitrate, we know something about the silver ion concentration. So this would be a problem where we have to solve for the silver bromide concentration. What's different in this problem is that we want to account for activity effects, so those ionic atmosphere effects. So we're going to write down the thermodynamic solubility product constant, the real Ksp, and that's where we use activities instead of concentrations. So we're going to need to know the activity of the silver cation and the activity of the bromide ion. Now remember that activities are concentrations times the activity coefficient for that particular chemical. And so we just would multiply all those together. So this first bit right here is the activity for the silver. The activity for the bromide is the molarity of the bromide times the activity coefficient, the gamma, for the bromide. Right? So those two bits. So again, we still do know the concentration of the silver. We still know the Ksp value. And so we're still looking for the bromide. But in order to solve this problem, we're going to need to know what these activity coefficients are. And in order to do that, we need to know the ionic strength of my solution. So that'll be kind of a starting point. We need to figure out the ionic strength of the solution. So what ions are in solution? So we've got silver and nitrate. We also have silver and bromide. But the Ksp value is really small, right? 10 to the minus 13. That tells you that very little of the silver is going to dissolve, right? This equilibrium does not favor the products much at all. So while it's true we're going to be adding a little bit of silver and a little bit of bromide to our solution, it's not enough to really change the ionic strength of our solution. So the ionic strength of our solution really comes from these dissolved ions. So we're not going to get enough to appreciably change this point. 010 molar. So we can ignore the contributions from the, uh, the yellow silvers and the yellow bromides that I've drawn here in my beaker. So the ionic strength then, using our formula, is going to be one half, and then we're going to need to know the uh, molarity of the silver ion, and we're going to multiply that by the charge of the silver ion, plus one squared, plus the um, 
molarity of the nitrate times the charge on the nitrate squared. So that's how we would calculate the ionic strength. But we know that silver nitrate is a one-to-one -one electrolyte. So we get one positive cation and one negatively charged anion for each mole. And so the ionic strength is just going to be equal to the molarity. So we already know what the ionic strength is. It's 0.010 molar. And so now the next step is to go and figure out the activity coefficients for um, my silver and my bromide at this ionic strength. So we can do that by uh, going to our table and looking those numbers up. So we want to look up the gamma for silver and the gamma for bromide. So let's bring up our table. So here's a table of activity coefficients at differing ionic strengths. And so you see here that um, we're looking for silver and bromide, which are both positive negative one ions. So we look through our list, aha, here's silver. So at a ionic strength of 0.01 molar, the silver activity coefficient is 0.898. And then we need to look through this table for bromide. Here's bromide in this row with an ionic size of 300 picometers for its hydrated radius. And again, at an ionic strength of 0.01 molar, we're at uh, 0.899. So those are pretty close to each other. All right, so let's go back and record those numbers. And so now what we need to do is substitute those into our KSP expression and solve for what we don't know. So KSP, we know that its value is 5.0 times 10 to the negative 13. And that's supposed to equal the silver ion concentration. And we know what that is. So it's 0.01 molar because it's a one-to-one -one stoichiometry. So we get 0.01 molar silver. Then we multiply by the silver ion activity coefficient, so 0.898. And we multiply that by the bromide concentration, and that's what we don't know. That's what we're trying to figure out. What is that molarity? Then we need to multiply that by the bromide ion activity coefficient, and so that's going to be 0.899. Again, that comes from our table. And so now what we do is just do the algebra to solve for the bromide concentration. So the bromide concentration is going to be equal to KSP. 5.0 times 10 to the negative 13th, divided by all the stuff that we know, the 0.01 molar, the uh, 0.898, and the 0.899. So those activity coefficients. And then we just do the math to figure out what that answer is. So as expected, I get a very small concentration, uh, 6.2 times 10 to the negative 11th molar. All right, so that would be the answer that we get solving this problem for uh, what is the concentration of bromide in this solution using activities. Just as a little exercise, let's think about what we would get if we didn't include these ionic atmosphere effects. And so we just work the problem by saying KSP is equal to the silver ion concentration times the bromide concentration. And we solve for the bromide ion concentration, Br minus, and that's just gonna be KSP divided by the uh, silver ion concentration, right? And so what that, what is that equal to? Uh, 5.0 times 10 to the negative 13 divided by the silver ion concentration, which is 0 0.010 molar, right? And so when we do the math there, we get a concentration that is 5.0 times 10 to the negative 11th molar. So you see that these two numbers are pretty close, but this one's a little bit higher. Because remember, the ionic atmosphere has stabilized the ions in solution, making the uh, silver bromide a little bit more soluble. So more of our uh, solid silver bromide is going to dissolve because of the ionic atmosphere effect. It's kind of interesting to figure out how different are these answers. So we could actually calculate a percent difference if we wanted to. And so we could just subtract those two. So 6.2 times 10 to the minus 11 minus 5.0 times 10 to the minus 11 divided by the um, better value. We'll just make it 6.2 times 10 to the minus 11, including the effects of ionic strength. And then we would multiply this by 100 to convert that into a percentage. So that's one way we could calculate a percent difference. We get an error of 19 or a percent difference of 19%. So that means by using our, our simple method where we ignore activity coefficients, we're going to incur an error of 19%. 
For um, ions where you have bigger charges on these and the activity coefficients are much different, um, you can see really quite huge errors by not including activity coefficients. But still, 19%, that's a pretty big error and maybe that's unacceptable. So this is why we include activity effects when working these kind of problems to correct for those. So, you know, not very different in terms of absolute number, but a 19% error, that might be important depending on your particular application.